Hello there and welcome today to 10 areas for B2B e-commerce optimization. My name is Amadi Patwell. Uh, I've been a data-driven optimizer since 2007. Uh, delivered over £350 million worth of incremental annual uplifts. I uh, ran my first personalization campaign back in 2008, back in the uh, direct marketing world. So today we're going to look at uh, 10 areas for B2B optimization. Uh, Focusing mainly on e-commerce, we'll be looking at the buying cycle, search, tools, landing pages, accounts, filters, pricing, localization, personalization, and product detail. So first is the buying journey, or the buying cycle. Uh, typically what you'll see is the usual journey is split, so where is you would get awareness, interest, consideration, etc. Um, this is split into two you have what's called the what I call the deciders versus the buyers. The deciders would be choosing a product, seeing if it's fit for uh, purpose, whereas the buyers or the purchasers will actually be the one uh, to uh, act to hand over the credit card details, debit card details, to actually, you know, submit an invoice, etc. Uh, the trick is we need to optimize for both parts of the journey. It's very easy to just follow the money and optimize for uh, your standard uh, e-commerce metrics, add to baskets and checkouts and you know average order values, uh, but you're missing a huge part of uh, your user base. So the deciders and buyers have um, different behavior to see if you have this happening on your site, uh, you can have a look. So deciders don't tend to view checkouts, don't tend to have accounts, uh, they tend to copy product names, part numbers, they tend to use data sheets, if you've got more technical products, they tend to view images, they tend to have higher session counts, so shorter sessions, and they tend to use tools to share information they found. Uh, buyers, on the other hand, are almost diametrically opposed. They have or registered for accounts during the journeys. They were previously purchased, searched for part numbers. They add to basket from product landing pages uh, and from product list pages. They have fewer sessions. Uh, they tend to have longer sessions, though, and they tend to build large baskets. So a few tips on how to optimize for these. Add the ability to share product calls, track their usage and link it to user IDs. Helps link the buyers to the browsers, uh, to the deciders. Uh, Project-based accounts allow users uh, who are both deciders and buyers to build a large uh, parts list and then they can go off and purchase these parts as well. It allows collaboration which can lead to higher uh, customer lifetime values. Uh, the ability to share, save, uh, upload, uh, and add wish lists um, just further enhances that ability to collaborate between multiple people within teams. So search. So improving site search can triple revenue. There's an Optimizely article about this, which one company, uh, a B2B e-commerce company, tripled their revenue uh, by optimizing the search. Uh, typically you'll see as well in the B2B e-commerce sphere, a lot of searches for product calls, product numbers, manufacturer part numbers, uh, rather than product names. Uh, up to 75% of customers can interact with Chirp in search, which is it tends to be higher than the B2C world. You will also see buyers tend to be overrepresented in search, um, and also as well, uh, typically if you are searching and you're using a part number, uh, best practice would say just take them straight to a, a product page rather than taking them through to a results page and then they have to click through to a part uh, product page as well. So I want to touch on one aspect of search which is zero results, no results, results are found, whatever you want to call it. Um, try always to be selling, always show product. Uh, if you can find any kind of product that remotely matches the user search term, that is better than nothing. Suggest alternate searches. Try looking at uh, breaking up the search term into constituent parts. So if someone's searching for, uh, I don't know, a multifunction copier, uh, if you don't have a multifunction copier, then you can show them copiers. Um, show popular, recent history, offers, recommendations, anything just to get product in front of people. Uh, and as uh, previously, there is also a Baymard article here about zero results pages um, and that are easy to uh, use examples. So here's an example I want to show you. This is a B2B e-com retailer focusing on uh, stuff for the building trade. Uh, so the search result was rugged hammer 
and, and so they brought up a bunch of hammers that are you know in hardened steel tempered carbon steel look fairly rugged to me brilliant exactly what i would like to see they've got me what i wanted i'm gonna get the the, the sledgehammer because i've got some stuff i need to knock down however one of their competitors same search term nothing no products at all related to what i searched for uh they do have plenty of hammers but for some reason they decided none of them were rugged or they decided not to show me any hammers but they're missing a trick it's a very simple uh zero results page it does a few things well but overall i think the primary thing that it's trying to do is trying to sell it's not doing well at all so next is tools so tools make the user's job easier um, they help to save them time and they can lead to, therefore to higher customer lifetime values because you'll see more users then coming again and again because they know how to use the tools on your side uh, and they prefer to use that versus whatever else other users might have so some good examples of tools are the ability to uh, load save email baskets this is great for repeat purchases of different amounts so uh, let's say every month i order uh, I know, 10 resistors and 10 uh, oscilloscopes and uh, you know 20 uh, 20 hammers um but you know that might be the case for this month and next month it might change but i always will you order some quantity of these products i could save a basket of hammer the right hammer the right oscilloscope the right uh other bits and pieces and then just change the quantities where i need to so therefore i'm not constantly having to search for the same products again uh bulk product code uploads is useful as well so um essentially this is you would have a csv or excel or something equivalent where you would have a lunch uh, a bunch of product codes or products that you previously ordered or uh, know that you will be ordering and then you can just upload it to once bam there's your basket uh, scheduled orders for larger purchases is similar to a school subscription service in b2c ecom but what you might say is uh, i need a thousand hammers uh, for a project that i'm working on over the next you know next year can you ship me you know a hundred odd per month that way I get uh, discounts for bulk purchases but actually uh, I don't have to store a thousand hammers in my warehouse I can just you know have them come in as per needed uh, another useful one is to have services for larger customers whether this is an API whether it's, it's a whole version of your site on their intranet or um, but yeah have some kind of tools for the larger organizations which can uh, directly interface with their current workflow so they don't have to leave um, their, their internal systems to make purchases. Landing pages. So the best converting B2B companies have more landing pages. It tends to be because of larger product ranges. I think it's also true in the B2C world. The best converting uh, e-com companies tend to have lots of landing pages. Um, so key product categories, manufacturers, sales, offers, any kind of services you offer as well. They should all have their own landing pages. Uh, so they can be used as a short-term tactic or uh, a long-term uh, longer term piece of work so uh, a good example of this was uh, you know when uh, covid first started kicking off uh, the company i worked for uh, sold some personal protective equipment it wasn't their main line but they did have it so they created a specific covid landing page is what we called it internally uh, with things like you know gloves and masks and uh, industrial size gallons of uh, disinfectant and hand gel and etc like that all things that people were starting to look for uh, and they became very popular and uh, actually did really well in fact too well because we sold out of all this kind of equipment and had to wait six months to get any more but you know that is that's a supply uh, problem not an e-com problem uh, so buyers tend to land on them in high proportions typically they'll be searching for product numbers in google or whatever search engine uh, or part numbers or exact product name so in which case they might go straight to a uh, product page in which case that product page almost needs to function as a page as well so just be aware of that here's some good examples of b2b uh, landing pages take a look um, feel free to um I wouldn't say copy but definitely test them out before you apply anything to your site so accounts 
So I've seen accounts or users with accounts uh, account for uh, more than 90% of revenue, as high as 95% in some cases. Uh, having a users with accounts increase their customer lifetime value, more likely to reorder the same products again and again because they're easy to find. Um, helps improve customer service levels because you can get users to self-serve in terms of things like getting VAT receipts, updating payment information, requesting lines of credit, etc, etc. All things that they would otherwise have to call up for, they can get done themselves, uh, which cuts down on your customer service needs and they can obviously then be redistributed to actually more uh, complex inquiries or even to uh, upselling and cross-selling users. So, as I mentioned, it's great places for how-to guides, so if you have got some tools like bulk upload or APIs, etc., it's a great way to show this is how you use these various things and this is how you can uh, add these to your services. Uh, you can also use it to push a subscription service, so if they are constantly ordering the same items again and again, say hi, you know, we've noticed you've ordered X amount of hammers over the last six months, uh, would you like to set up a recurring order for X and you know, get a 5% discount. Uh, allow users to personalize information about the same account. So, um, are they more cared about the recent order? Do they care more about uh, previous orders, uh, shipping information, etc. etc. Uh, allow them to customize it to their own usage where possible. Um, so, and also show orders for the last six months, but let them search for longer. This means they can easily find. So that is best practice in terms of accounts. So filters. Uh, filters are used by both deciders and buyers. Uh, they allow users to customize uh, experience, especially if you can you know, have that uh, have that available where they can edit what they see. In terms of some common things that users might like to see is in stock filtering, so only uh, being able to show users uh, items that are in stock and available for delivery uh, and delivery timeline filters so if you have some stuff that's available next day next three days etc they can choose uh, how do they want uh, or based upon their product needs and saving these preferences as well so this is a great way to push accounts to users that you say look you can save your uh, preferences for your next experience some of the use cases uh, look at horizontal versus ver vertical filters uh, allow users to choose the preferred orientation so some users might want to go through the, down the entire list of filters until they say right th this is everything I need the products to do and then have a look to see what products need to match um, others might prefer uh, a more product focused view where they can see right I've got 300 products uh, and slowly whittle it down from their must-haves to the should-haves and so they can get down to something and ensure they always have uh, some products available uh, and allow customization of column orders, number of columns, type of columns and default number of products uh, which is also really useful as well uh, and again you can help push this uh, to account usage by saying you can save these options for next time next we're going to look at pricing uh, allow users to see prices both with and without VAT. VAT branches of business uh, usually only care um, about price of VAT, VAT but uh, like I said, it, it's just good practice to allow users to show that information. Allow users to earn discounts for large orders and quantities, um, or you know, and then alert users when they're getting close to price price point price break points. Um, so if they have you know 50 hammers, but if they bought another five hammers. Uh, actually, you know, they'll get the those five out hammers for almost next to nothing. Then great, uh, alert the users to that you'll uh, you'll save them money uh, and also sell more products as well, uh, which is a win-win. Uh, and allow users to see prices in different currencies because while they might be in, based in the UK or the US, they might be ordering a part for uh, some colleagues in France or Canada or uh, where it is around the world so they need to see what the, the price that the you know they will be charged uh, accordingly so yeah that's always a good option there and uh, next is localization so telling the experience for each locale is especially important when it comes to business um, mainly due to various different regulations, laws, etc. that they have, no two countries' laws, regulations, 
uh, taxation etc is exactly the same um, so it massively can differ even within the same region um, a top tip is to use local colleagues for insights uh, boots on the ground rule always get some of that local experience that local know-how and they know the market better than anyone if you don't have uh, people in every single country uh, something I like to do is check out what the main competitors are in each country. So if you have a you know a large competitor in China, check them out, see how they promote things. If you're trying to move into that market or if you're already in that market and look to optimize further. Uh, failing that, check Amazon. They tend to do localization pretty well, um, especially when it comes to things like you know addresses, card information, etc., etc. Um, always useful to look at that. Um, and like as I said before. The laws and regulations vary widely so much that uh, it can make a huge difference. I remember working on the site um, where I think we saw that something like uh, for the whole business, about 80% of orders were online, but for China, it was 80% of orders were offline. And we couldn't figure out why. And then we talked to one of the uh, local marketing guys in China and says, Well, that's because in China, you have to have uh, you know equivalent of a VAT receipt uh, to be able to claim back the tax. Uh, so all Chinese companies will say you will get a VAT receipt email to you after your order uh, and they have it prominently displayed in the checkout. We didn't do that because it's just you know standard operating procedure um, to send one out but once we started showing this information we actually saw yes that, that, that percentage started to change and we started seeing more orders online versus offline which is obviously more popular for your business. Next, personalization and merchandising. So segmentation is massive when it comes to any kind of personalization and merchandising. Uh, it does reduce the size of the audiences. You're less likely to get statistical significance. So you either have to go for uh, much bolder changes or you have to go for uh, larger segments and just try to uh, keep that uh, the numbers as high as possible. Some good um, things, in, uh, good ideas in terms of personalization and merchandising are looking at recently viewed products and displaying those to users, saying previously ordered, promotional items, popular products, uh, you know, making sure your product recommendations are on point and your recommendations engine uh, is built really soundly uh, and based on uh, good quality data is massively important. Uh, and then the data, you know, where you are, are you getting that from? Uh, this is another area where user accounts are really important. If you've got a CRM system like Salesforce, massively, this can be mined uh, for huge dividends. But obviously, it will take some work. Uh, and what with you know the amount of work involved, I believe this needs to be a full-time role within itself. Uh, trying to pass this off to the experimentation or CRO person. Uh, it doesn't really fit. They need to be uh, someone who can make the uh, uh, make themselves very close with the sales, marketing, merchandising uh, teams. Uh, that way, they always know what's coming up. They can be a step ahead of the curve when they're not being re reactive. They can be proactive. Um, so yeah, definitely needs to be a full-time role. Definitely, they need to build relationships with other uh, teams in the organisation uh, to ensure everyone's pulling in the same direction. Finally, product details. So, uh, with product details, the, the needs differ slightly for deciders and buyers. Deciders need uh, much more detailed information. Uh, so, they might use things like 3D diagrams, product videos, images, downloadable spec sheets uh, to help them make the mind of this piece of software, of this piece of uh, you know mining equipment, or whatever it might be, fits their needs. However, the buyers kind of need different levels of information. They need to know about delivery timelines, price breakpoints, unit in stock. Uh, might need to share it with their higher up to get sign off if it's above their purchasing uh, power. Um, so, yeah, try to think of it in terms of how the experience works for both users uh, and then optimize for e each individually. Okay, that was all today. I hope you learned a few things. Uh, if you would like to reach out to me, uh, um, this is my email address for my uh, company, Conversions Matter. Uh, you can also 
view my website. I'll be honest, I've not updated it in very, uh, very often or you know, very recently, but uh, it's there. You can take a look. Uh, I'm probably more active on LinkedIn if you want to take a look at me there. Uh, always happy to chat. I'm also available on Slack in the Experimentation Nation Slack, Major Slack, and a few other Slacks as well. Um, so, yeah, thanks a lot. I uh, hope you learned some things and uh, I look forward to seeing some sessions as well. Okay, bye bye.